What's going on? What's going on? It's your man Chris D. A, a, a Buzz back again with another one. Uh, today I figured I wanted to talk about my girl, Ebony K. Ebony K. Williams. She back in the uh, news again. Maybe not as big as the first time that she was in the news, but uh, she's back in the news again. And it's safe to say that uh, <laughs> Ebony K. Williams makes, uh, I guess, the internet feel some type of way. I'm not here to uh, pile on to her or anything like that. I just wanted to explore the situation, uh, where we was and where we are now. Now, before she had stirred up a lot of controversy because of her comments about not wanting to date a bus driver. And that sparked a lot of controversy. A lot of people was feeling some type of way. You know me, I didn't. It didn't make a difference to me. I made it, even made a little reaction video. I'll tag it in the description of this video. But uh, you know, everybody's feeling some type of way, whether one about her saying that she wouldn't date a bus driver unless he owned the bus. You know, and. It sparked a question of, you know, what women want and what women deserve and a whole a whole controversy that was just on the internet that back and forth, in my opinion, is like the thing that is the war between the sexes that's going on, where it seems to me like it's a concerted effort to separate men from women. I believe, I truly believe that's been going on probably since before I was born. And I, yeah, boy, I've been living a long time. <laughs> May not look like it. May not look like it, but you know, I've been here a long time, y'all. But this topic is very interesting because of the fact of that she brought it up in one of her, uh, I guess her last uh, little exposés at the uh, show, uh, show she used to do before it got, uh, went away where she was talking about uh, how women could choose the option of becoming a single mother on their own without, you know, all the, I guess, all the drama, if you will, of uh, dealing with a baby daddy. And it's a very interesting topic. I guess the problem is, is like most black women are finding out that uh, wanting to choose that route is that it's a, a lack of uh, black sperm. Now, I guess they got some groups, you know, in the system of capitalism, people want to find a way to capitalize. So I guess there's some black uh, folks that got together are getting together, putting together uh, a black sperm bank, you know what I'm saying, to meet that demand. But is that where we're headed, y'all, to where, you know, There's no connection between man and woman anymore. That really begs that question to me for the future of, you know, could that be a possibility? You know, could that be something where women would choose a sperm sickle than a man? Very interesting question that I will pose to y'all. What do you think about it? ladies ladies that's tuning in shout out to the ladies that's uh subscribed to the channel and have currently jumped up in my viewership or the ladies checking your boy out i would too you know what i'm saying if i was you you know what i'm saying but uh i appreciate that much love much love shout out to y'all what do y'all think about that you know i me personally you know since i do have a, a daughter i would want her my best in my best interest i would want her to be self-sufficient and not need a man but i definitely don't encourage her to not seek out a relationship if that's what she felt and i would definitely want as bad as i hate to say it, my baby girl i will want her to have children the natural way if you will that's just a father to his daughter that's just what i would want for my daughter Definitely hope she would, if she chooses to go that route, hopefully it's with 
a man that cares about her deeply. You know, I think where a lot of uh, women get caught up in the age of being open and free is that, you know, we just choose wrong. Dudes do it too. A lot of guys I know shoot the club up willingly, wholeheartedly. <laughs> making babies all around the place. I mean, I've said the, before I used to, I was all, when I was young, I was scared of that guy. So I damn sure wasn't trying to plant my seed in there yet and everything. I couldn't do that. That's just, that's just what's going on. But I do realize that when you see these situations like Ebony K. Williams now, it, leads me to believe there's some of the consequences of the war to separate women from men. <laughs> and it also got me thinking, damn, she's made all that fuss back in the days about not wanting to date a bus driver, but could it be possible that the donor was a bus driver? Because <laughs> let's be real, ain't no men with money, millionaires or billionaires or men with money. I don't think there's donating their sperm to a sperm bank. Now they may save their sperm for down the road, but I don't think they're donating it to a sperm bank. So, who was the donor? I'm pretty sure it wasn't a high value man. And not to say that those type of men wouldn't Donate sperm. I'm just saying that the likelihood of it is little to none. And let's be honest, brothers is, is getting it all over the place. So I don't think there's no need for them to do donate to a sperm bank unless it's worth a while. There's so much, uh, you know, running around, kitty cat running around that I don't think brothers is, is down with going to a sperm bank and, you know, standing in line to. Do what you gotta do in the cup. You know what I'm saying? Where well, you could be with a woman. Any woman. <laughs> so I just don't think that's happening on, the, on that level. But I just wanted to share a couple of videos today uh, from a man and a woman, just so y'all could see how some of the internet took to this about this Ebony K. Williams situation. Here we go. Becoming more apparent that modern millennial women have completely lost their minds. Ebony K. Williams is 40 years old. I will put her on the older millennial side, but she wasted a lot of her younger years shoplifting from the mall so she could get clothes and shoes and pretend like she had it like that. Attempting to get white men to like her, but they all kicked her to the curb because she's inherently obnoxious and impossible to get along with. So she's been faking it until she made it, chasing a lifestyle. Remember, she told Ayala she wouldn't date a bus driver. How we can create and not build when some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes. They're not having the resources, and some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if a bus driver? If he owns the bus. If he owns no. it. If he owns the bus. See, that's, a problem. that's a problem. That's a problem. Okay. Because the standards and requisites, and I'm not talking about him laying on his sofa playing video games all day. <laughs> I'm not talking about mm -hmm. that. But the standards and the criteria that we use to measure men is off for who mm. we are as women and who they are in this society. I would date a bus driver mm. if he was, if he loved driving the bus, if he was a man of integrity, if he was good to his mama, if he treated me well, I would date a bus driver. So you see, that's where the uh, issue had came in from the controversy back in them days. It came from people was talking about, <laughs> damn, 
you know, why wouldn't you give a bus driver a chance? And then sometimes women's standards could be too high. And here she's hearing it from this older woman about how, why she would date a bus driver and what's wrong with a bus driver. That's what a lot of people were arguing and, and going back and forth about online was that fact right there. So I just wanted to bring that to y'all for anybody to, to get context on what I'm talking about for this video. So it's so funny to look back on what she said back then to where we are right now. But well, let's continue. But we think that it's another human being's responsibility to give us what we need instead of us building together. Ebony K. Williams got some random sperm donor from the donation bank, and now she's pregnant. All right, now let's head down to the loud where Tom Brady is trying to track down our Earth. I'm here, Vaughn, but it looks like I just missed. Unbelievable. The same woman who was supposedly so high class and couldn't date a bus driver picked out some random DNA from a possible homeless man or a possible let me powder my nose baser. Because I'm sorry, any man standing in line to don't Donate DNA for $100, $200. Gotta be living a real tough, low, broke life. Either that or he's a mental nutcase. Chances are he's both. Most of them need the money, just like people going to donate plasma. Everybody knows when you go up there to donate the plasma, you gotta be on your last $20 bill, your last tank of gas, your last piece of bread, your last piece of air, water, electricity, whatever. Rich people don't show up to no plasma bank or no sperm bank on a normal Monday clocking in like it's a job donating for cash. So yeah, no different from where Ebony went to. Same process. And what's even more silly about this is this woman gloating about the whole experience with People Magazine, you know, like she's conquering the world. It's embarrassing enough to go through this situation, but it's outright humiliating to do this to yourself and put yourself on the jumbo trying to have all of us in your business on purpose for clout. It's very sad, but true. These flamingos will do anything for clout, even get a baby from the DNA of a junkie. We have to really get into this today, but first, take a second to make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the notification bell for all updates. Young ladies, this one is for lesson. you. I'm here to let you know this is not normal, no matter how much society is trying to push this weird narrative 1,000% out of order. Okay, so Ebony K. Williams is trying to find a way to get everybody to talk about her and get some attention. She's broadcasting all of her dumb personal decisions for people to comment on and try to wiggle her way back to the breakfast club. Ever since the bus driver thing, she's been itching to go viral again. This sick, egotistical witch decided she was going to craft up a baby on her own and voluntarily become a single mother because she believes she can raise a child alone and she's got the money to do it. It's funny, we're talking about the same group that supposedly educated the public preaching that money wasn't enough for a child. Every time a father said he provided for his child monetarily, they would argue that he could still be a deadbeat and label those men as such. Many argue that it's true that money isn't enough to raise a child. The child has to have the guidance of not just a mother, but they need the leadership of a father as well. You know, balance. Something once prevalent in society before the strong black and independent, I don't need a man to raise no child. Serial baby mamas of 1986 popped up. I'm talking about before it became a norm, especially in the black community, for children to be raised in a single parent household led by women. Now, single mothers end up in that situation for many different reasons. But never have I ever seen so many women choosing that life for themselves and resorting to pick up strange mystery DNA. I'm sorry, this is a new level of pathetic and I don't care how much they try to make this normal, this is weird. And very selfish too. Just because you want to be a parent doesn't mean you should be. Doesn't mean you're qualified to be. All women should not reproduce. And on the other end, all men should not reproduce. It's a lot of y'all running around men and women trying to make another you. You're doing the world a disservice. Now shout out to the uh, shout out to the sisters out there that are speaking out against this. Now I have no problem with, you know, you've been trying for years to have babies. So you go the intravenous route. You know what I'm saying? I have no problem with people that get that gotta go that route. You know what I'm saying? But to choose this as a lifestyle, it seems it does seem weird. It does seem odd. It does seem strange. It doesn't seem natural. You know, 
And it is funny that uh, a lot of the time when some of these women uh, take criticism like that, they go uh, they go to God real quick or they go to church. Because sometimes we use the church to cloak a lot of things that ain't right. A lot of us do that, men and women. But I think it's funny that this seems like the sisterhood is losing its grip in some aspects. Because there's a lot of women like this that are speaking out against these type of things and other women that do this, do this stuff and choose it as a lifestyle. Now, who am I to tell women how to choose their lifestyle? But I'm just looking at it as a father of a daughter on, you know, things happen in life, you know, in relationships in general. But for you to choose to be a single mother off the tizop, I think that's a bit strange. But let's continue. The planet is struggling enough with you. We don't need you times two. Reproduce some more failure, more confusion, more foolishness. One thing I can say about Vivica Fox, she knew she wasn't a woman for a real relationship. For real. She knew that already. At least she wasn't this selfish like Ebony to go out and create a whole human being and drag them along with her. I give Vivica that because what Ebony is doing is worse. It's absolutely crazy. Being a parent isn't about you. It's about who, ladies and gents. That's right. It's about the children. Once you bring a child into this world, and until you fully raise them to go into the world alone, your life is not your own. It's no longer about you and what you want. There are certain decisions and things you have to do for that child that you're now responsible for. And just because Ebony was too combative to get along with a man, she couldn't attract or keep a man of high quality, the men she wanted didn't want her, this is how you end up in this situation. Let's face it, all the white men said they didn't want anything to do with her anymore, so she decided she didn't need a man at all. Well, this would be fine if she just stayed alone and left everybody out of it. She's not only involving a child now, but she's broadcasting this to everybody. And just because she didn't need a man doesn't mean that child doesn't need one. The way she's parading this crazy story around with People Magazine talking about an exclusive, showing she's having a baby from some mystery mayonnaise, this is just a whole new level of mentally deranged. Then attempting to push this narrative to other black women to get on board and do the same thing is just outright despicable. Literally doing the devil's work. Well, Ebony K. Williams, she's having a girl, again, reproducing another her. Just think of the strong masculine woman Ebony's mother raised. Now Ebony is trying to continue the tradition. Absolutely crazy. Let's go ahead and get the conversation started. Ebony, she's been pushing black this and black that for a couple of years now. How many of you want to bet her mystery DNA didn't come from a black man? Tell me what you think about this below. Special thank you to Starlet. I appreciate you, Starlet, for all of your support, as well as our brother Dark Power and Lady T. Don't forget that you can support this channel as well. Links to Cash App and PayPal are below. Ladies, fellas, want a balance analysis? Want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share. Would you date a bus driver? You, would you date If he bus owns driver? the bus. If he owns no. it. If he owns the bus, See, he that's owns what, it. No. So you see, that's just one perspective from uh, Pink Book Lessons of how uh, some women feel about the situation of women just choosing to be uh, single mothers as opposed to, you know, the regular way uh, things happen in relationships. And I think it's one of those things that where that's a tough road to go down. To me, that's a tough road to go down. You can't go down that road. And I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest going down that road for women. I mean, it's ooh. 
it's rough enough <laughs> with two. It's rough enough for two. I'm going to tell you like that. It's, it's rough enough. Crazy babies when you got two. But hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just choosing that lifestyle. I, I ain't knocking the ladies, man. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. Get you a sperm pop. <laughs> that's what I call it. A sperm pop sickle. I, I guess yeah. I don't know like I said once again one thing, what do y'all think about it I, the whole situation I'm not going to pop on Ebony K. Williams like people are I'm just showing you what some people think online and you know most of it whether uh, people want the, the attention anyway whether positive or negative it's all traffic to you so I'm um, quite sure Ebony K is enjoying this. Some people call her selfish for this and women that choose this lifestyle, but others will say she's just living her truth. But we'll share this other video, see what y'all think, and then we get up out of here. Shane Duke Jackson at it again with another episode of the Sa. Shopify point of sale makes it easy to start and grow your retail Love business. It. All backed by the world's most powerful the King. Liberty John. Many of you brothers sent me this information once you got a hold of it. And it has everything to do Ebony K. Williams. Ebony K. Williams is an attorney, TV show host, uh, which is interesting because she can't stay at a network for long. Mostly all of those guys got fired from the Grio, as you know. Um, and it was just a quite terrible experience. And her, her career has been sort of tumultuous with, you know, just keeping steady work in the entertainment industry. Um, Real Housewives, that's not working out. Ebony K. Williams has been adamant about Black women taking the opportunities to do artificial insemination. Largely because of the marriage pool of black men, it's just not there. I know that you don't believe me, so I have some proof to back that up, and then I'll come back. Black women are availing ourselves to all of the options that our hard work and circumstances currently afford us. And that means that single motherhood by choice is going to be an option that more and more black women consider and even exercise. So anybody that's in their feelings about that can go ahead and start to process right now. Because Black women that have the privilege to embark upon this expensive and oftentimes lengthy process will increasingly decide to forego marriages and partnerships that do not serve us and that are not in our best interests. And now that bypassing those insufficient relationships does not have to come at the expense of motherhood, well, frankly, it's a whole new world. A world in which black women are no longer subject to the desperation of being chose, because now we get to do the choosing. And as we choose, we do have to contend with the reality of a dismally small supply of black sperm. Because most black women on this journey, we want to create children that look like us and that look like our families, and that and I'm glad she said that because it is an important point that what I was saying earlier at the beginning of the video is about, you know, it's not a lot of black sperm out there for these women that want to have these kids without the black man. Now, I ain't saying that white women ain't doing this too, or Asian women or Spanish women or any other uh, type of woman. They might, they might choose this lifestyle too. But what I'm saying is that Don't it seem a little bit unnatural? They're already telling you it's expensive. So in a way, are you, is it a clout thing? That yeah, I have enough money to do this and I don't need you men. Some, some part of me, the conspiracy theorist in me, thinks that, <laughs> you know, it's a in your face to men in general. And 
I think if that's uh, that's our future moving forward, I know they want to keep the birth rates down in America and in the world. You know, people out there actively seeking population control, but that's for another video. Don't unalive me now. <laughs> Don't unalive me. But it gives you a glimpse into the future on if we further the divide between men and women. If we further that divide between men and women, I think, in my opinion, this is the type of thing you're going to lead to. Worse than, I guess, our generation that grew up without fathers. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the uh, men that I know that grew up without their father, they're great fathers and grandparents right now. A lot of people that didn't, that a lot of people would have been labeled deadbeat fathers. A great fathers. And shout out to y'all that's stuck in them kids' lives. Because they, they're right, you know, if a child does need both parents. I know things happen in relationships. Trust me, Lord Jeezy, I know. <laughs> Your boy, no. But I do know that a child, if you want someone to grow or give them the best chance in life to be a stable adult, they need both of their parents in their life. So for all you parents out there that's doing the co-parenting thing, you know, make, make it work the best it can. That's all I can say is make it work the best it can. And if uh, all you women out there, I plead with you, I beg with you, if you, you have a good father to your child, but the things that just went bad in your relationship, please give the dude a chance to be in that kid's life. Please. Please, ladies. I'm, I'm begging you. Lord knows I had the best baby mama in the world. I like to say Shout out to you. I miss you, Dawn. But a lot of guys didn't have a Dawn. And they go through hell in the handbasket with dealing with a woman, especially when y'all not together, and especially when children are involved. So once again, I just encourage uh, all y'all out there that may have babies together, but you're no longer with that person, please try to work, work things out to where you still have both of them, both of y'all in that baby's life because it's going to pay dividends down the road, more than you know. But sorry for rambling. <laughs> Let's go. Let's continue. I mean, we want black sperm. And as we heard from Reese Brooks, it's the definition of slim pickings. And sometimes that means compromising on this aspect of your journey. Now, I am extremely fortunate that I was able to secure two vials of black sperm from California Cryobank when I embarked on this part of my journey last fall. But I do know that I am an outlier. So I've got two concrete tips for single black women who think this may be an option, either now or maybe later. Number one, please check out Reproductive Village. It's a new black owned cryobank and it's designed to help with this shortage of black sperm. It's set to open its doors in D.C. later this year, and it will also have drop-off locations in Atlanta and Houston, Texas. And number two, be proactive. I say go ahead and start looking right now for desirable black sperm. You register with all four of the big cryobanks, and this includes California Cryobank, which I used, Seattle Sperm Bank, Fairfax Cryobank, and Zytex. That is our beloved Ebony K. Williams talking about this in detail now to be honest it seemed like right after this video ebony k williams was sounding more and more like kevin samuels she was telling black women to get married out of college you know she was changing up her tune a little bit as we age doesn't matter how much money we accumulate our degrees or professional accolades the reality is, is that our marriage and partnership market value is depreciating with every passing year that statement alone has a lot of the sisterhood upset with her. Now, but it seems like for Ebony K. Williams, that was a little bit too late. Ebony K. Williams has become pregnant. I don't know exactly how. 
I'm assuming artificial insemination with black sperm, but I am bothered by this comment that she made. Ebony K. Williams, thank you, God. Abundantly blessed and so excited to welcome my daughter to this world. Then she reads the scripture. He will give you the desires of your heart. Psalms 37, 4. I'm sorry, man. I've seen so many African-American women use religion to their vantage point or to their position. But what they're doing, in my opinion, would be out of the context of God in the first place. And this is one of the things that really keeps, you know, a lot of men. Anyone with $10,000 or more in credit card debt or personal loans may qualify for help from national debt relief. And from dealing in the black community because of this jaded religious point of view. First of all, you don't want to do what the scriptures are telling you in the first place, which is to do what? Okay. Find a husband, submit to that husband. That man is second before God. You have a problem with that. All right. That's that trigger word. That's that trigger word. That is that trigger word that my man O'Shea just used. Now I'm gonna speak on that for a little minute, like uh, a hot second. I think <laughs> I've said this just jokingly in a, in a little promo, but I was just saying that men, that word submissive in 2024 to a woman is toxic, whether you choose to believe it or not. So like I've said before, we men better get creative with that, uh, find a new word, but means the same thing. If that's what you want your woman to do. Because just saying, I need you to be submit to me or be submissive is a triggering word for some women. You know, I, don't, I know every man wants a good wife. And, uh, you want your wife to have your back and serve you and, you know, take care of you in certain aspects and you can take care of her and Blase block. But in the terms of wanting a woman to submit to you, in my personal opinion, she has to do that naturally, my brothers. She has to want to do that for you. I'm sorry that some of you brothers may not have experienced that with a woman where she chooses you, she chooses to be with you. You know what I'm saying? A lot of you guys gotta make stipulations and business deals with women. But if you don't, if a woman don't connect with you like that, the where she wants to do that, like she wants to take care of you, she wants to cook for you, she wants to clean for you, then what are we doing? You know, you're not going to make her just because you say, I want her to be submissive. She has to want that, in my opinion. Well, let's continue. That It didn't say submit to him if he makes more money than you. That's not what the scripture says, does it? Shout out to David Carroll who pointed that out. No, it doesn't say that. It says submit to that man. And children should happen in the context of marriage. Everything else should be considered an abomination. And we see people thanking God for things that are abomination. You see it a lot on Facebook, man. This is one of the reasons why I had to stop being so active on Facebook on my individual profiles. You would have chicks, single moms, pregnant by two or three different guys, talking about how blessed they are to get pregnant. And all of the kids have different dads and, you know, this is a blessing. My kid is a blessing. And I'm thinking, well, is that what your Bible says in your head? Or is that what the Bible says in the actual book? Because in actuality, that's not the case. Furthermore, what does this indicate to Ebony K. Williams? It indicates that, well, you failed, okay? You're beautiful, for sure. Educated, you had your opportunities with black men and white men. Couldn't close the deal. Whose fault is that? So let's now make it seem good by shifting the goalposts to say that God gives you the desires of your heart. In actuality, I don't want to buy that. 
because you want to know who will suffer the most the kid a lot of these people and, and, I, and i think about this and, I, and I, I dare not compare her to cynthia g but i want to just talk about cynthia g cynthia g was another person who in my honest opinion um you know was unstable not saying ebony k williams is i'm just saying she's another person that's unstable and she got pregnant oh. Hey, yeah, so soon. Not for the reason of staying with that man. Cynthia G got pregnant to have a child. And Cynthia G could not even love her child enough to stop her shenanigans here on YouTube. Okay? She could not get away from herself. So when the child was born, oh, she had all the opportunities to clean her act up. She had every opportunity to do the right thing, but she didn't. Cynthia G blew a $20,000 a month income, right? Because of her hatred of the black community and black men and lost that income, got kicked off of the platform and probably met poverty. But she didn't care about that kid. If she did, she would have stopped. She didn't care about that kid enough because if she did, she would give that kid a father that would actually be in his life. But it's about what they want. It's the desires of your heart. And that's the similar thing wrong with Ebony K. Williams. But what about what's best for the kid? They don't care. And how do these kids turn up? over the last 50 years in the black community. I, I know it's taboo to talk about this, but in comparisons to other kids, you see, we are always talking about the absentee black father. All black men don't wanna step up in their relationships and take care of their women. Well, if that is the case, why would you wanna put your child in more danger? And I'm talking about those who have this particular argument. I'm not saying Ebony K. Williams will, but I'm sure she has a very similar argument from what I've heard her talk about. Why do you then become mothers and then put your kid through that stress if you feel like, well, it's going to be hard, it's struggle, it's difficult. People believe because they have money, because they have education, being a parent is easy. It's not easy. Of a young child, it's not easy, especially being a girl parent. No father figure there. To be there with the child, it's, it's, it's really sad. And I hate to see our kids come up in the black community like that because they're already at a disadvantage, you know? They don't know how to communicate with the opposite sex. And that goes for men and women, children alike. They both suffer. No one wins in such a scenario. Nobody wins. And we're always putting people in, no one wins. Even the mother who feels like she's gaining something because she wants a kid, she doesn't win. I've seen it all the time especially in America, and now I'm living in Africa. I don't know how many women I, I, I come across that want to have a child, or that want go out there and have a child. You know who suffers? Everyone else. Society suffers. And there's a lot of evidence of seeing that in America. The community suffers. Now, Ebony K. Williams happens to be doing somewhat financially okay. That doesn't mean that socially she'll have everything figured out. And it's just a sad thing when you decide to have a child without the mother or father being there. It really robs the child of that situation. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Serpy John. Pretty sure for all that you do, subscribe to the bell. We're out. Yeah, shout out to O'Shea Duke Jackson. Y'all should definitely go check him out, man. Definitely go subscribe to him and check his page out. Yeah, definitely has some good content for the black community that we all should uh, pay attention to. So once again, shout out to O'Shea and Pink Book Lessons. You know, in my personal opinion, I do agree that some girls do look at a baby as a necessity. You know, you get a lot of attention. I see a, a lot of women, you know, so especially your first time pregnant, you get a lot of attention while you're pregnant. That I believe a lot, some of these women, young women, get used to until the baby's born <laughs> then the baby starts getting all the attention so you're like damn then you may have another baby but i really do truly believe that some women do look at babies as an accessory and not the beautiful blessing of motherhood that it truly is you know i'm not dumb and I'm not stuck in the past. So I truly believe that uh, intravenous births or pregnancies, you know, are a part of our society going forward. I have no doubt in that. But I do have an issue with women that openly choose that lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? And you're supposed to be 
uh, into men. You know what I'm saying? We get it with two lesbian uh, couples. We get it with that. Okay, you y'all are in a lesbian relationship. Y'all, there's no man in the in the picture, but you want a baby. So I I can see that. But for heterosexual women to choose to be single mothers, I'm not. That seems kind of weird to me. <laughs> but I will say, my girl Ebony K, she sure knows how to get a rise out of the internet, good or bad. She knows how to get some traffic her way. And uh, it just begs the question to what do y'all think about the sperm pop, ladies? You know, men, have you uh, have you stood in line? Have you donated my uh, male subscribers? <laughs> Let me know. I mean, you know, tell me what tell me what that's like. Tell me what that's all about. But. I just wanted to share these videos today and sparking y'all minds a question about what y'all think about this situation. Back then, what she thought about the bus driver, not dating a bus driver, and then now possibly the donor of her sperm could be that bus driver that she didn't want. Because make no mistake, ain't no rich men or no high value men going to no sperm bank to donate. I'm pretty sure of that. But once again, it's your man, Chris V. Let me know what you think about this video down below. Like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll get back with you. Peace.